Now I'm in the forest. You know, we just put Chocolate Face 15 feet up a tree, and she's hacking a shaga mushroom down. <laughs> you know, we're so into the mushroom. I was like, Chocolate Face, hang off the mushroom itself. Just see if you can pull it down. She's like, I could fall. <laughs> Get the mushroom. What's going on? The tree mushrooms are the medicinal mushrooms. Very interesting distinction. The mushrooms that grow in trees, those are the medicinal mushrooms. And what do they do? They specifically help your immune system manufacture the weapons. And how do you empower them to do that? You put superfoods in with them. You follow me here? How many do you need? You need if you knew one superfood, let's just say it's whatever, whatever it is, goji berry. And you knew one super herb, cordyceps, you got something powerful there. Just that. That's why I'm just sitting, we're just taking the, all that complex herbalism and we're blowing it to the most simple thing possible. Everybody with me on this? Because I don't expect you to understand herbalism like I do, but I, can, I know everybody can do this. Or this. Who can do this? Who can hit the buttons on the blender? I know everybody can do that. That's where we can all agree on, right? You just, I don't know what to do. Just, he said, throw a little that in there and throw that in there. Water, something. <laughs> That's how you start. Now, probably the first time around, unless you get a little instruction, it's going to taste awful, right? And then you try, if you figure it out, you're like, oh, wait a second. If we add a little bit of this and we round it, like get some of the flavor rounded out, next thing you know, it's like, I don't want any of the other stuff anymore, ever. I have done this so hardcore, I'm a hardcore kind of person, that I lived on superfood chocolate smoothies one time for three months straight, nothing else. No food even, just drinks. It was, a, it was incredible, one of the best experiences of my whole life. Just beyond incredible. What's going on with cordyceps? This, this stuff was so powerful in Chinese medicine that it was under penalty of death to actually possess it. Only the emperor could possess it. You know, we lose track sometimes, don't we? Like, we have everything. We have every superfood. We have every super herb. I mean, under penalty of death. Now it's available to everybody. If you know about it. That's why you're here. It's like, let's know about it. And what do you do? You just ADD it. You just add it in. You know, when you go in down this whole thing here, that's all true. Here's another thing that's not in here. And that is, in Chinese medicine, they say if you take enough cordyceps, it actually gets into your adrenal kidney meridian, and it starts putting something into the bank account for your genetics for the, for the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. After 40 years of taking cordyceps, it starts producing. You start developing into a being that can produce two, three generations down healthy offspring. That's what they say in Chinese medicine. And now I understand that. It's called the Jing energy, J-I-N-G. People have lower back pain, knee problems, they're bankrupt on Jing. Impotence, infertility, Jing energy, bankrupted. Right? This is really a key idea. What do you do? Cordyceps, number one thing for that traditionally in Chinese medicine. Okay, now we're getting down. I've got five minutes left here with you guys, so I don't want to keep you here all night. And we're going to have a party here tonight. Woo. And we want to get all your questions. Are you ready for questions and answers? Yes. Ready. Okay, now I want to just jump back here because I told you I was going to talk about mold. That's how I met Chad, and that's why I got here is because Chad came to New York about five or six years ago, and I met him through Amy and Rochelle. Can you put that up here? Colloidal gold. Here's what I used to do. We used to have this apartment in Soho, and it was so far from any health food store, and I'd get, a, I'd, I'd get like 12 of the gold from Chad, and I'd have them at my apartment, and then I, there's no way I can drink the tap water. Even I had a whole system put on my water there that would like filter the heck out of everything and bring it down to total solid materials down to less than a half a part per million. I'd drink it, I'd get sick. I couldn't drink, I couldn't drink even though it was filtered to death. I still couldn't drink the water. So then I'd be in my apartment, I'd be typing away, I'd be, then I'd get up and try to distract myself. And then I'd, I'd get thirsty. So that's how I really got into Gold Rush. That is actually because I got a bunch of it from Chad and I keep ship, ship, shipping it to my house. Next thing you know, I'm like, okay, let me just start drinking this stuff. And so I started drinking it instead of spring water. <laughs> and it's interesting because I noticed from Dr. Gabriel Cousins' research on our stress defense shield, which is serotonin, I noticed that something was going on with that. Like it just builds up a barrier to the stress. Now that's, that's really important to learn. How many people know about serotonin and have heard about it before? 
the more serotonin, every, by the way, every single living thing on the earth, even bacteria, produces serotonin. How many people knew that? Every living thing on the earth produces serotonin, even bacteria. So as you know, we think serotonin is just in us, it is not just in us. For example, cacao beans contain serotonin. They help build up that stress defense shield. Actually, almost everything contains serotonin, but some things have a lot more than others. Now, gold, from the Steiner perspective, any Rudolf Steiner fans in here? From the Steiner perspective, gold is on the octave of the sun, which is also the octave of Jesus, which is also the octave of the heart, which is the same octave that cacao is on. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. See, the way Steiner understood the world is not like everything is like these different categories or different things. He understood that everything is a frequency. And so certain things are in that frequency and certain things are in another frequency. Like colloidal silver is on the same frequency as the moon. Is that, you got that? Okay, so this, that's super fascinating. So when you, and it also that's on the same frequency as spring water, the moon. Colloidal silver, spring water, as it comes out, ice cold. And those are all the same frequency. And I could do a whole, a whole seminar on that, I do occasionally, just on the different octaves of things. Because some people don't understand things in the linear way that we've been taught. They need to understand it from that way, the more on the octaves. Like, every, you know, when you hit C, it vibrates all the Cs on the piano. You hit D, it vibrates all the Ds on the piano. That's exactly what I'm talking about here. Middle C is the sun. Cacao would be this one over here. Gold's right here, right? And you just keep going down, you'll find all the octaves. Jesus and all that. Purple <laughs> on that sun octave. So when you start drinking that, you don't, don't drink it the way I did. I drink a whole one of those in like a day because I was thirsty. <laughs> that stuff, that's potent stuff. You kind of drink, you know, a little sip, take a shot, do whatever. You feel like you're a little bit stressed out. You need a little bit of like a stress defense shield, a little worn down. That's when you get into that stuff. And again, what this is, is kind of as we approach 2012, how many people know about this? Do you, I finally, just from studying astrologers, how many people believe in astrology? It's true. Why it's true, who knows? It's irrational. I don't know. But it, there, who knows? You know what I mean? It's like, it's true. I mean, if somebody is a Leo or if they're a Virgo or whatever, they have characteristics, it's true. Anyway, how many people knew that Pluto was conjunct with the center of the galaxy in, in March of this year? So what happened was in November, Pluto started moving into the center, in front of the center of the galaxy and then literally was right in the center of the galaxy over March, and then gradually about July moved away from it, meaning that Pluto was amplified, the energies coming out of the center of the galaxy were amplified through Pluto and hitting us. And so what would happen, and I bet you this happened in your life, between November 2007 and about July of 2008, just like pretty much last month, whatever, you know, six weeks ago, that there was an amplification of all the dark stuff you tried to hide in the closet. That's Pluto. Now here's where it relates here. There's, this is the reason why this gold rush opportunity is even happening right now and why this is all developing right now. Because what's happening is in 2012, the sun goes conjunct with the center of the galaxy. So all the sun energy things amplify heart energies. And it's been happening slowly but surely because the sun and all the solar system is moving slowly and more closely into the haze of all the suns that are at the center of the galaxy. And it's our, it started happening in the late 1980s, right? Till in, in 2012, we'll be right there. And then that will continue on for another 20 or 30 years. Has anybody noticed that there's been this whole thing about heart energy a lot more in the last 20 years, right? Getting into the heart more. That's all part related to this. It's an astrological influence. And so gold and colloidal gold, like it was colloidal silver. Now all of a sudden, now that's kind of passing. Now it's colloidal gold. Why? Because it's on the heart energy. Sun energy. Isn't that fascinating? And all amplifying out of the center of the galaxy, because the center of the galaxy has a hundred million suns. A hundred million suns. So that amplifies to us, and we're like, whoa. That is, so people ask me about 2012, that's what I tell them. Because everybody's like, do you think everybody's going to be disintegrated in 2012? <laughs> everybody's unconscious is going to die? Like, no, I don't think that's going to happen.